Great. Thank you, Stefan. Um, again, a pleasure to be a part of this meeting. And um, we talked about some more advanced uh, retrograde problem solving earlier in the afternoon. Today, we'll just take it back down to really going step by step and trying to understand each part of this technique, which is um, a critical part of the hybrid algorithm in general to be able to understand when and how to perform retrograde PCI. My disclosures. So um, as uh, Jay had pointed out, film review is, is really essential, and I would mentioned this earlier, that I think it's important to review the film for multiple periods of time and maybe even on different days and really try to come back and challenge whether or not uh, certain aspects of the case in the angiogram are still true on different days because um, um, these are there's sometimes very subtle connections that really come out after an extended review. The hybrid algorithm um, is important, as we saw, to really determine what are the optimal types of patients and, uh, uh, anatomies that are favorable for retrograde. Uh, identifying incomplete angiography is really, really important. Um, as you saw earlier when Jay showed that um, an incomplete angiogram can really, really confuse us in terms of what we need to do. So we need to be able to address that at the point of care when we do our PCI, um, CTO PCI by dual angiography, or another option is to use CT ahead of time, especially if the target vessel is thought to be incompletely visualized or very small. Um, then the next step is to really identify plausible collaterals and really stratify their risk and complexity um, and, and in terms of both engaging them and wiring them and whether or not investment procedures are needed. Sometimes proximal disease can interfere with selection of septals, for example. Dual access um, is the next approach and historically we have um, started with eight French uh, bilateral bifemoral sheaths. Um, yeah, eight French, seven French sheets are becoming more common, and now um, radial access is also starting to uh, take a greater um, approach um, as one gets more experience. Um, ACTs are critical to be maintained at a high anticoagulation rate. Donor, ve donor vessel injury can be um, life-threatening, so um, high ACTs of 350 or higher are recommended. The guides, um, uh, strong supportive guides with AL and EB shapes are key, and a 90 centimeter shortened guide is necessary for retrograde approaches. The wires, there are specific wires to cross, penetrate, and externalize, and we'll review those. Um, the microcatheters, we've also seen some of those um, uh, introduced earlier today, um, understanding their movement, understanding when to use guide extensions, and how to trap are essential parts of this. Um, understanding reverse cart, the concept in troubleshooting, and then finally, being ready to manage complications and perforations are, are vital. So these are really kind of the high-level overviews. And um, I'll just flash up the, the hybrid algorithm, which you now have seen multiple times, and really thinking about proximal cap ambiguity, um, the distal landing zone, if the, uh, whether or not it ends at a bifurcation. Um, and a great dissection reentry is very hard when the bifurcation is, is truly involved. Are there appropriate interventional collaterals and are the lesions long? When those features are present, um, it really can help us um, stratify towards a retrograde approach. And in general, um, there's really only um, two ways, either through or around and either forwards or backwards. So four total ways to solve this case. On the retrograde side, we can escalate just like with the integrate side with wires or we can dissect and re-enter. Um, this is a slide borrowed from Monos, and this really helps us understand the range of collaterals that we can choose for vessel selection. Um, the safest um, collateral is the saphenous vein graft. This practically is used in a minority of cases, under 10% or so are often used. Um, if the distal hood is patent, um, that's often a favorable option because the wire will then enter into a vessel um, that can safely get into the target vessel. Um, but the angle of insertion of the vein graft is important. Um, whether or not there are stents in the vein graft are important. So some of these features do limit its applicability. Septals are the most commonly utilized, um, crossing from the LAD to right or right to LAD. Um, they can be tortuous, but their perforation risk is relatively lower. Um, septal hematomas are usually extremely well tolerated. Wire perforations, um, especially if they're not followed by a microcatheter, are very well tolerated. On the final end are the epicardials, which sometimes can look very tempting, um, especially when they're large caliber. Um, but note that any crossing of an epicardial, epicardial collateral can lead to um, the potential risk for a fatal complication with extreme tamponade rapidly through these large vessels. So being able to understand how to manage those and really coming those from both directions for sealing is really important.
The general approach to septal crossing is to use a supportive 90 centimeter guide. A guide extension can be very helpful. Um, a longer microcatheter, 150, 155 centimeters. And then to engage the septal um, initially with a workhorse wire, sometimes these septals are quite protected and angulated, so a double wire entry may be necessary, a double bend on the wire. Sometimes we have to use dedicated angled microcatheters like a super cross venture or swift ninja to really be able to uh, uh, overcome a 90 to 120 degree angle. Once we have our wire into the septal, um, we will swap out if we use uh, an angulated catheter for a microcatheter. This is then um, uh, understood in, in typically an areocranial view, which is an unpanned, um, low magnification, dedicated view in the other areocranial or areo views. And once we have crossed, we confirm the position. It's uh, vital to do this in the LAO and LAO cranial positions. Um, what wires do we use? There's this concept of, of using wires that allow us to surf rapidly. So we want to be efficient. We want to rapidly probe. Um, we don't want to overcommit to a certain septal. We use hydrophilic soft steerable wires that really translate one to one. Um, some of them are shown below. Um, if you note, they really are low um, intensity in terms of penetration, one gram. Um, most um, are hydrophilic, and um, the fielder series is also polymer jacketed and the XTR in particular is tapered. Um, the Xion is probably the most commonly used. It's a very soft uh, wire, especially if it's not weaponized by a, a closely approximated microcatheter. Um, this is a slide I showed earlier, but effectively illustrates the um, point of um, septal surfing, which is to really rapidly probe um, and with gentle sliding, uh, gentle rotations of this wire, um, and try to seek out channels where there is no resistance to the Xion, and it will often find its way. And you can see here on the right-hand panel that once it really crosses into the distal septal bed, it smoothly enters the RPDA. This is confirmed in the LAO and REO channels. So um, this is um, um, a case that I just wanted to show. We performed it yesterday just to highlight some of these step-by-step um, -step uh, procedures that we um, face when doing retrograde um, PCI. But one of the first things was to, is to um, perform good dual angiography. This was a, nearly a flush occlusion, osteo RCA CTO, a long lesion um, that was really illustrated. And our initial diagnostic angiogram identified a um, one PDA and a modestly sized PLV. And when we did both left coronary and Lima angiography, we saw this is really a very, very large um, distal circulation with two PDAs, um, one coming off right after the, the first one with a severe osteolesion there. So you get a tremendous amount of information. Spending time preserving the bifurcation is a really important part of this. And, um, understanding your initial angiography is critical. So this is a complicated CTO with um, a long lesion, 80 millimeters length, um, calcified blood stump with a large distal bed. So um, one of the first things um, that we want to, to do is, um, is to set up the retrograde uh, picture by taking a dedicated um, unpanned uh, uh, areocranial view to look at the septal connections. And indeed, we found um, several plausible septals, um, S1, S2, S3, all seem to have potential connections. And then um, our first step was to really move forward and set up the anagrade. And I, I like to set up the anagrade um, maneuver first because it will facilitate reverse cart. It also will minimize the amount of time that we are ischemic by being in the retrograde donor. Um, this is not always easy to do, um, especially when you have a blunt and, and osteolesion. We made use of an anchor balloon technique um, that you can see sitting in the middle of the right panel in the middle of the screen. That's a 1.5 millimeter balloon. And um, actually, just as we saw today on the live case, our initial sharp wires were deflecting very strongly away from the actual true course of the vessel, even though it was calcified. So it took several uh, attempts to ultimately penetrate this um, proximal cap and a CP12 um, actually knuckled about three millimeters in. That allowed us to bring the microcatheter in. Now you can see advancing of the knuckle safely into the architecture of the mid-right coronary. So the next um, approach was then to try to start to the retrograde um, approach here. And we went into um, looking at all of our different septals. We couldn't tell exactly which one might um, connect, so we said we're just going to get into our first septal, and that was the third one, S3, and we tried um, for about five minutes or so to cross, and we were ultimately not able to select a channel that would connect. So we then went to our next, um, um, what we thought would be the, the next most attractive septal, and that was S1, and in order to actually get into S1, 
we had to do an angioplasty and then use a supercross 90 degree microcatheter to bring um, the wire in and then swap out with another microcatheter. And we were able to actually cross, but unfortunately two microcatheters would not cross just right at the very southern border of the right here, risking risking death here with the uh, movement of the arrow. But um, just at the bottom right there, there's actually a, the um, septal, the microcatheter is actually starting to fold up on itself. And so now we were faced um, with this question. We've tried two, two, micro two different channels. Should we look at the vein graft? Um, should we look at the lima? This uh, particular um, uh, patient was um, really not in a position to undergo a uh, lima-based approach with the ischemic cardiomyopathy and so forth. Thank you very much. So you can see there that you should not be pushing these microcatheters aggressively. You can suddenly prolapse and create a gigantic rent and perforation. And so we said at this point we're going to stop and choose a different course. So we went back to our second septal. Um, and um, here actually using um, the techniques that you saw before, just gentle manipulation of the Xi'an, but steady gentle manipulation. This one, which was unexpected, actually crossed them quite smoothly. And this was confirmed um, in the LAO cranial view. Um, and so again, it just brings up that concept is that you won't necessarily know what your best connection is, what's your most effective connection. A fine cross, a 150 catheter, and you can see on the bottom right of the right-hand panel, um, was now able to basically make this um, all the way uh, down to the distal cap. And so we're now at our next stage of attacking the distal cap and, and heading retrograde. So that's the way microcatheter should move smoothly, steadily with each heartbeat. Um, again, we rotate it one or two or three times. We don't over torque that because it can indeed kink. So once we get to the distal cap, we really are deciding about either we're going to go through, true to true, or around um, dissection and plan reentry. Because this was a long lesion, we uh, were, uh, felt that a knuckle-based approach for dissection reentry was the right approach. Um, the steps in this are to engage the distal cap, create a knuckle dissection supported by the microcatheter retrograde, overlap the subintimal retrograde and anagrade wires, and then advance the microcatheter uh, uh, on the retro side towards the wire end, and then perform anagrade uh, subintimal um, angioplasty sized roughly to about 50 to 75 percent of the vessel is, is my typical approach. Um, then advance the retrograde wire into that common plane that's just been uh, created, um, and either into the anagrade guide or guide extension catheter. A microcatheter will then follow that retrograde into the guide or extension. Um, and then we externalize and then perform regular angioplasty. And I'll just show in that in the case that we had before um, um, here, in order to actually get penetrating, we had to use um, our initial Xi'an wire that we crossed did not um, engage the proximal cap. A pilot 200 and Gaia 3 did not use the proximal cap. So we stepped up further to a Confianza Pro 12. A microcatheter was advanced and we could then knuckle a retrograde. Um, some of the, the wires that we showed earlier the, in terms of choosing them really partially depend on whether or not you understand the anatomy and architecture. If you have a clear path, using a stiff wire for a millimeter or two just to penetrate the distal cap and falling with a knuckle to define the course with a Pilot 200 is often a very successful, safe way to create dissections both anagrade and retrograde. Um, once we had our wires in uh, retrograde knuckle in place, we then brought an anagrade knuckle uh, down that we had, um, had done initially, so we didn't waste any time. We already had the anagrade knuckle established, brought in a balloon, um, which was sized to three millimeters. This was a large vessel. The initial um, externalization did not work, and the number one failure mode is typically undersizing the initial anagrade um, balloon for um, reverse cart. So we then upgraded to a 3.5 balloon and further also brought in a guideliner um, extension catheter, eight French um, there, which you see in the middle of the right coronary. And now you'll see a Gaia 3 wire trying to find that. And the Gaia 3 offers really one to one torque supported by the microcatheter. And you'll see here now as it flies um, right here when it flips into that actual catheter and we externalize. Um, as it goes up in there. So the microcatheter follows this. Uh, and the next step is to do externalization. Um, we take out our, our Gaia 3, and you saw the wire floating by. This is an externalized wire, 350 um, centimeters um, uh, along, and, there, and there's about three choices that we can use. Uh, this uh, figure from Manos' textbook demonstrates that once we have advanced our, our, our externalization wire, um, from the retrograde guide, it's going to come out now of the anagrade guide. 
we have our thumb or finger on the actual um, anti-grade uh, guide, um, taken, the two-way is taken off, and you're actually feeling for the tapping against your thumb or finger. Once it is there, you uh, then remove your finger or thumb, advance the wire further into the TUI, which has been placed into the co-pilot, and then the wire comes out the other side. And now we're able to perform regular angioplasty. It's often helpful to put a torker on the retrograde back end to avoid pulling it through. We then advance balloons and stents over the anti-grade end. The externalization wires, there's um, two major ones that are used now, the R350 and the RG3. They have different properties. Um, in general, the RG3 is um, very um, sturdy as a wire for actually manipulating balloons and stents in terms of getting them on there. Um, we were able to successfully stent, and the last part of this is to then carefully remove the retrograde gear. This removal step has the potential to cause great harm. It's um, uh, of course, important, we have a microcatheter that is um, there in the actual protecting that collateral channel. We advance it back into the guide. Before we start to pull the, the retrograde wire back and the retrograde microcatheter, it's super important to de-sheath um, and de-engage your left coronary uh, guide, in this case, your retrograde guide, pull it several centimeters back into the order because as we start to um, pull our retrograde wire and retrograde out, there will be a, a marked pull on these um, uh, retrograde uh, guides and one can dissect the left main quite quickly and cause severe don donal vessel injury. So desheathing it uh, is a critical part of it. Um, and then we gently pull out the externalization wire until it's near the microcatheter in and then gently counterclock um, rotate the microcatheter out uh, as a wire in and um, catheter are withdrawn. So um, it's critical at the end to check for donal vessel injury. So in summary, um, the retrograde approach is an essential CTO-PCI method. Um, understanding the, the steps um, individually um, requires understanding the angiogram, dedicated equipment, crossing, dissection, and reentry strategies and complications. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Frank.